Hello, Robert Bastian here. I want to re review with you a little simple idea for people with what I call the fortress larynx who have spasmodic dysphonia. Now, in my caseload of uh, 12 to 1500 people across my career, uh, I've encountered this three times. So this is a rare circumstance uh, that prevents you from doing what I call high quality injections. How do I define high quality injections? First, they have to be available pretty much on demand because people are busy, they have lives, they have professions, and they can't be told you have to wait a month for your injection. When they need it, they need it. So here, we can typically get them in between anywhere from the day of the request to maybe a week, but rarely do we make them wait longer than that. Um, and most, more often, it's on the, 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 the day of the request or, or, or a day or two later. Uh, so it has to be available on demand. It needs to be done in a way that's uh, re reasonably slick, uh, uh, skillful. So people don't want to come in and feel like a pin cushion each time and have a big bruise. You want to be able to fairly elegantly get to the, the target and be done. So on demand, done elegantly. And the third is the results need to be as consistent as possible. Nobody can be perfectly consistent because the target is so small. The larynx, the vocal cord muscle might be that big. So it's not a very big muscle. Uh, and it's not on the surface, it's inside. But still, you're, you sh people should leave knowing it's going to work every time. Work a little differently, a little stronger seeming, a little weaker seeming, but quite consistent. Uh, so now and again, and again three times in my career, people with this fortress larynx, and every time they come, I'm struggling uh, to get to the target, and I'm working at it way longer than I want to, and it's not a nice experience for the patient and the variability is too great. Why is that? Well, some reasons. Uh, one is that the, the, the main one is that the anatomy is difficult. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, to, just so you get an idea of what's required for a Botox injection, you have to, if you're using the EMG, you have to find your way through this little chink right here between the thyroid cartilage here and the cricoid cartilage here. So the chink right there in some people is extremely narrow, especially in men. Sometimes it seems narrower than in women. So it's hard to get through th that little very, very narrow chink. Secondly, there are a few men, women it's more common, but men where the cricoid projects anteriorly quite far beyond the anterior uh, surface of the thyroid cartilage. And so that's now limiting your your ability to angle, you, <clears throat> you have to angle up uh, laterally and superiorly, and so if this is sticking way out, you're beginning from farther back, and it's harder to, to make the bend. Uh, you can put a curve in your needle and, and that kind of thing, but in some people it remains really difficult, especially if it's a tall larynx. And then uh, when you struggle with the t traditional approach, you start thinking of other methods, and there are several. Uh, now, I'm talking about one out of maybe 300 people, so this is an uncommon uh, circumstance, but uh, there could be a person who has the perfect storm. They have the tiny uh, cricothyroid membrane, they have the projecting cricoid, it's a tall larynx, and so you can get there from above here, but it's difficult because of the, the height of the larynx. You can try going straight through the cartilage, and in women that can work, could work, but in men it's often very ossified, and the lower you get, the, the more ossified it is. Um, and of course there's this <clears throat> very last resort method, which is to do it through the mouth here in the office, and there are people who just aren't into sword swallowing, and it's uh, very difficult for them. So what have I done for about three people in my large caseload who have this fortress larynx problem. Well, it might seem a little bit extreme, but it's made all the difference for these people. What I did was to take them to the operating room under local anesthesia only. No, I don't even think we did sedation. I can't remember exactly, but I don't think we did. Just local anesthesia here, 
make about a two centimeter incision that, or maybe three centimeter to get down to the thyroid cartilage and then you make a window right here because the vocal cord is deep to that window. So let me sh put a little yellow post-it on here to show you approximately how you might do this. So you might make a window. Now that's a bigger window than you would use for a medialization laryngoplasty in a male maybe uh, 6 by 11 or 12 and in a female 5 by 10. So it's a generous sized window and you, you uh, go down to the cartilage, you remove that uh, rectangle of external perichondrium, you drill away the cartilage with a cutting burr, and then you remove the internal perichondrium as well. Why do you do that? Because chondroneogenesis, reformation of cartilage, occurs from the peri perichondrium. And so you're removing that perichondrium to reduce the, the reformation of new cartilage. When new cartilage is formed, it's often highly calcified, and so you just don't want that. Um, now, when they come into the office, you can pass a needle. You, you know in your mind's eye where that window is, and you can feel landmarks. And so now you can come straight through the window and do and he hear the signal and get the injection done. It's made all the difference in those three people. So, uh, you know, very skillful, uh, high quality shots, it's not going to be needed very often, but uh, I've run into the fortress larynx and I thought maybe you would too, and so it's one idea of how you might uh, meet that challenge. Thanks for listening.